The Institute of HeartMath uh, said this, there is also new data suggesting that the heart's field is directly involved in intuitive perception beyond mind through its coupling to an energetic information outside the bounds of space and time. Yes, outside the walls of the illusion. Thus, they want heart-closed people so that we do not breach the walls of the illusion and stay within it. So, the idea is to hold us here and keep us detached of an awareness and an influence from that. Time is an illusion. It's used to control us so powerfully. The body is a biological computer. Um, and it, it allows us to experience this reality, but if, we, if that becomes the sense of who we are, we shut out that, and then big time we are open to control. Uh, we talk about the computer when, it, when it's, it won't work and won't switch on. We say, my computer's dead. Well, when we die, we don't die. The computer ceases to function, and the true self goes on living its infinity. <laughs> there is no death. Um, and, and, and what do you do when your computer? Oh, my computer's broke down. It won't work. What are you going to do? I'm going to get another computer. Reincarnation. Um, and um, <laughs> so then you have computers going into sleep mode. Well, so do we. Well, we tick over on very, very little energy. And then um, you have the antivirus systems in computers which are seeking out threats to the operating system to give them a smack and, and stuff them out we have a fantastically advanced one called the human immune system and what happens when a new virus in the computer world comes and your antivirus technology is not used to it it can get through and destroy the operating system what happens when people like Europeans took uh, smallpox to North America and the Native Americans, they went down like nine pins because their uh, antivirus, their immune system was not used to that. Same thing, just more advanced. The uh, DNA is the human body computer's uh, central processing unit, CPU, uh, or rather hard drive. The brain is the CPU. It's the hard drive that holds the, 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 the genetic blueprint. Um, and therefore, when you have people, and there are some doctors that have studied this, I know one in particular has done a lot of research on it, they found that when people have had heart transplants, particularly heart transplants, funny enough, but transplants of lungs and other organs, they have taken on um, not just the uh, characteristics personality-wise of the donor, but also aptitudes and gifts, like this. suddenly they can paint well, and they didn't before. And people are going, why? This is a mystery. No, it's, it's not a mystery. What is downloaded from the donor to the receiver is information which is now available to the receiving operating system and can influence the attitudes, thoughts and actions of that system. And this is the CPU, the brain, central processing unit which processes um, information but the whole genetic system is processing information and this in its true power is the biggest processor of information. And this is uh, an enhanced picture taken at the Necker Hospital in Paris, um, where they put tracer dye into acupuncture points, in, you know, the acupuncture uh, uh, healing system. And I looked at that and I thought that's a motherboard. And it's interesting because what's passing through these uh, meridian lines is what the Chinese call qi. It goes back thousands of years. And what they found is when the chi uh, energy passing through these lines is, is not moving at optimum speed, it's too fast or it's too slow, then there is manifest in that body a mental or emotional uh, or physical dis-ease, disharmony. And of course, what happens when a virus hits a computer? What's the first thing we see? Hey, my computer's ever so slow today, yes, because the information is not passing round to optimum, so the computer is malfunctioning. The information is not passing round the body to optimum, uh, the body computer is malfunctioning, which we call dis-ease. And what um, acupuncture is doing with the needles and various other techniques is balancing this flow of chi information to restore that harmony. 
So, someone like Dogma, what do you think of that, Dogma? Oh, rubbish, rubbish. How can you uh, put a needle in a toe to uh, cure a headache? It's ridiculous. Okay, let me just take you through that, darling. Um, these lines go around the body. They are circuits. And if the circuit affecting the head and causing the headache is blocked in the toe, Dogma, it's no bloody use putting a needle in the head, mate, is it? Is it? Really? No. And, and that's the other thing. Computers and computer viruses, what are they? They are rogue information. They are rogue information that distorts the information balance and harmony of the computer operating system and thus distort the way it operates. When it happens in human beings, we call that illness and disease. Distorted information, that is what this is. That's what this is. They are distorting the operating system, the human body, so it will not read reality in its, in its true potential sharpness and clarity. Therefore, here in the holographic world of the conscious mind, we see food additives, uh, stuff in water like fluoride, and all the crap that goes in kids' uh, sodas and sweets and candies, all that stuff. But if you take that down to its base state, these are all vibrational information fields of great distortion. And thus, they are distorting the information balance of the body. And that's how food additives and additives to water and all the other stuff cause mental, emotional and physical dis-ease. And they're doing it on purpose. And they're doing it on purpose because they are freaking insane through fire in another state of awareness and you don't get burned. We are decoding the solidity as part of the process that we are going through to create this reality. Um, quantum physics has long shown this reality. It's not solid, it can't be solid. They say it's made of atoms. Well, atoms have no solidity. Um, as someone that said uh, quite rightly, that if you take the nucleus of an atom to be the size of a 10 cent piece, then the atom would have to be about the size of a cathedral. And the rest would be empty space. Actually, it's not empty space. It's, it's just a packet of bloody energy. And you know when you put um, a, a disk in a computer, as the decoding process goes on to put it on a screen, certain processes happen. This thing that they call atoms is just one of the processes to turn vibrational information through electrical into a digital and holographic. We live in a holographic world, illusory physical. And, and this is very, very important because if you think the world is solid, what is solid? What's, not, what's solid, another word for it? Limitation, I can't. Once you realize it's fluid and you can play with it, once you start to uh, uh, awaken to it, then limitation starts to be diluted. They don't want limit, people with diluted limitation, they want people with a perception of total limitation. This physical world that seems so solid is actually a decoded reality through the digital to the holographic. Um, I, I mean, you know, you can look at a computer game and the best of them look real solid when you're looking at the screen. It's just information being decoded. Uh, the world is holographic of the conscious mind. In 2009, after I've been talking about this, writing about this for years, I came across this new scientist magazine, center of mainstream science in Britain magazine, uh, from uh, 2009 and the front cover was you are a hologram projected from the edge of the universe because some mainstream sciences, uh, scientists even now are, are, are seeing that the cul-de-sacs exist for all the mainstream explanations for reality they go nowhere they, they, there has to be another explanation and, and, and a number of them are now going into the holographic level but we're not it's not a hologram projected from the edge of the universe it's not it's a hologram being decoded from information that pervades the freaking universe. That's what it is. And there's this other thing about this, this question that, some, that many scientists have when they've seen that something can take a waveform and a particle form at the same time. How is that possible? Well, let's look at the hologram. When you, when you have your holographic print, your information construct in waveform, and you decode it with the laser and it projects the three-dimensional illusory physical image. Then you have the physical and you have the waveform at the same time. 
Not only that, they have to exist at the same time because that is merely a projection from that. Take away that, you take away that. And the other great thing is it explains so much, this one. The other great thing about holograms is that every part of a hologram is a smaller version of the whole. Thus, if you take a holographic print and you cut it into four and fire the laser at each one, you do not get a quarter a part of the picture, you get a quarter size version of the whole picture. So every part of a hologram is a smaller version of the whole. Yes, the smaller you go, the less clarity you get, but it's still a smaller version of the whole, and that's what this is. Reflexology and acupuncture and other alternative ways of healing can find places on the hands and the feet where they can uh, uh, treat uh, organs and other parts of the body because the feet, the ear, the hand are just smaller parts of the body hologram. Therefore, there is a connection between them fundamentally and if you treat the smaller part of the hologram, you affect the whole hologram. This is why acupuncture can find, reflexology can find these points on the ear, for instance, which represent all different parts of the body. And the palm reading and all that stuff is, is from this because in that hand is information um, from the entire body. So we have as above, so below. We have the human energy field in the smaller part of the hologram, and we have the earth energy field in the greater part of the hologram. We have the hologram uh, again expressed there in the brain cell in the universe. And as uh, William Blake in uh, a greater part of that poem, to see a world in a grain of sand and heaven in a wild flower, hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in an hour. A pinhead and infinity are the same thing. This is just one point, literally, within the greater ocean. And um, this is what we are, a point of attention uh, within the greater ocean. And again, scientists have said, how can particles communicate when they're billions of miles apart and communicate instantly? Answer, they are not billions of miles apart. They are expressions of the one infinite whole and thus when they move as the one infinite whole, their communication must be instant because there is actually no space between them. Um, and then, oh, dogmas, dog, dogmas got a fret on now. Astrology. Astrology! Freaks! Rubbish! Well, let's have a look what astrology is. Um, we see planets and stuff like that moving around. But if we go back to the waveform construct from which everything is comes, this is just the holographic decoding level of it. Um, they are information fields. And as they move through the greater information field, they are impacting cosmic internet, posting, receiving, upon the greater field. We interact with that greater field. So as the planets move, the information fields move, and affect the greater field, they are influencing us. And if we are uh, uh, locked in to a certain point in this cycle, then um, we take on a different uh, expression of that universal field when we connect with it, what we call birth. Some people say, uh, 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 you know, when um, we are first created um, and uh, before the birth process happens. But um, therefore, we take on a different field, for, uh, part of the universal field. So as we go through life, we are going to inf be influenced and be affected by the great changes in the greater field as the planets move around and go into their conjunctions and stuff than someone who comes in at a different point and therefore takes on a different expression of that field. It's all energy interacting with each other, information interacting with each other. And when you take the holographic nature of reality, never mind the greater consciousness, even at the level of the body, we are a smaller version of the universe. Because the universe is holographic, therefore we are a smaller version of the universe. We've come a bloody long way from Charlie Smith driving his bus and Ethel Jones at the store.
that they want us to believe we are. Then there's the digital level. This is a, another level which um, can explain a lot of things. Then now, this is getting closer and closer to our reality now, our experience reality. They're now creating digital holograms. This is a mainstream media report about them, and it says, and they uh, look uh, real, so real that when Ford used a digital hologram to show off a car concept model, people stopped, afraid to walk into it. They thought the holographic car was really there. That car is a hologram, it's not solid, but just appears so. This digital hologram has taken it even further.